Hey you guys and welcome to my channel Candy with Carla. For those of you who are new to the channel, thank you so much for stopping by. For those of you who have already subscribed to this channel, welcome back. I am a certified life coach. This is a faith-based channel. First and foremost, I want to jump right in because I know the video that I'm going to be talking about today is going to be long. I want to thank everyone who recently watched my last video about me thinking about quitting YouTube. People out there in the YouTube land, you know who you are, people that I don't know personally, but they, I have, you know, subscribed to their channel. They have subscribed to my channel and I, I watch their channel. Their content is awesome and they have encouraged me to keep pushing forth. I thank you so much for the encouraging words. I really appreciate you as well as people that I know personally that um, has commented also on my YouTube channel and also who have called me and gave me encouraging words. Um, I really do appreciate you. What it actually did, what it, it let me know that even though people may not always be able to um, comment when after they listen, but it doesn't mean that because they didn't comment that they're not um, getting anything from the video that they're not encouraged by the videos that they're, you know, it doesn't mean that they can't relate or anything. It just means that they may not have been able to comment, but you know, these people are telling me that they do enjoy my content. They have been encouraged. They have been inspired. So it really touched my heart. Um, you know, to hear people say those things and give me those encouraging words to keep pressing through and don't quit, right? So I'm so grateful for you all who have played a part in encouraging me to keep pushing through. I'm greatly appreciated. Thank you, Jesus, for um, allowing y'all to let God use y'all to speak to me. So I am grateful and thank you again. Um, moving right on, moving right along, um, I wanna talk about people pleasing. I wanna talk about comparison and perfectionist. So we're going to start off by talking about people pleasing. I recently watched a podcast and in this particular podcast, um, it just revealed to me some th things about uh, people pleasing that I wasn't aware of that I was doing. I've always been one to, not always, but I have been one to, I guess since I've been on my Christian walk, to worry about what people think of me and how they see me, how they perceive me. I was not aware that that was a form of people pleasing because what they described in a podcast was what we do is um, we'll get around people, certain people, and we'll, you know, try to basically um, maybe um, just fit in. And I don't want to say pretend or anything like that, being fake or pretending. That's not what we're talking about here. But you try to just like, let's say I'll use myself as an example. Like I have a lot of Christian friends and um, most of my Christian friends, it's a lot of them that's way more seasoned than I am. Um, and so... I, it's been times where I've heard them pray. And when I'm talking about they can pray the house down, they can pray the house down, um, as well as listening to people in church as well. Right. And so um, and not just my friends being at church as well. I've realized that sometimes um, <clears throat> I can feel like I may not be as spiritual as they are because they pray better than me or maybe they say different things or they're they. Um, they can call out scripture and tell you exactly where, where it came from. Like for me, I'm not mastered that yet. It's some scriptures that I do know and I do know where exactly or of course like, you know, different scriptures um, in the Bible that I, I can tell you exactly where they come from, what, what um, chapter, what verse. But most of the time, if I recite a scripture, I, don't, I can't remember where it come from. I just know that the scripture is in the Bible, right? And it's a lot of people that I know that when they quote scriptures, they quote exactly where it comes from. I'm, I just have not gotten there yet. It's only a few that I can do. Most of the time, you're just going to hear me say the scripture and not where it comes from. And on the YouTube channel, what I've done is if I've quoted a scripture, I'll go back and insert where it came from, you know, on my on the screen. But initially, I don't tell you where it comes from because I don't remember um, and I do read my word. Um, that's just something that I have not yet mastered yet. Um, and sometimes I feel a little inadequate. And so, you know, it just made me feel a ways like I'm not good enough, kind of, sort of speak. Um, maybe I'm not spiritual enough because I can't remember exactly what book the scripture came out of, exactly what verse the scripture came from. 
and things of that nature. So, um, you know, I'll compare myself to that and just feel like I'm inadequate and stuff like that. And, and it doesn't feel good. Um, also, like I said, people praying, you know, we have events or church functions or just church in general where you have people praying, you know, whatever. I've always been extremely fearful to pray in front of people. Like, I don't like praying in front of people because I know some people that can pray, 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 pray. And I feel like I don't pray like that. Like, I don't use all that. Like, I don't, some scriptures I do memorize during prayer and I will call those scriptures out during my prayer time. But it seemed like it's just a difference the way that I feel like I pray as opposed to somebody that really just pray and they just seem like they say all the right things. And I noticed the Holy Spirit is using them as well as I believe that the Holy Spirit is using me in my prayer time too. But I think that I don't um, probably allow the Holy Spirit to fully take control during my prayer time. And so with that being said, especially I'm not going to say when I'm praying just by myself, but if I have to pray in front of other people. And so therefore, um, you know, it's like if somebody asks me to pray, my focus is going to be more on am I saying the right things instead of actually me being in tune with God. Um, and so it's like. I feel like, you know, I just don't measure up if that makes sense. But um, the people pleasing part really just comes in at, like I said, going back to having church events and stuff. It's like, let's just say, for instance, when, like I said, people have church events, I think I kind of like went in left field a little bit, but, um, and I might not be able to attend or I might not go, or I might be just really exhausted, you know, or tired or whatever the case may be. Cause I know I have a lot going on. Like people, um, you know, will make you feel so bad because, you know, they'll say, you know, um, that no matter what you still need to do this and this and this it's, it's and life just doesn't happen like that. So then I'll begin to think like, what are they going to think? Because they call Christians lazy. I don't consider myself a lazy Christian. You know what I'm saying? I don't. Um, I, um, am not perfect by far. That's not what I'm saying. And I'm not saying that I'm perfect, but I'm not lazy. But I'm also know that I'm not perfect. Like I read my word, I study my word, I have um, prayer time with God, um, and I try my best to do these things every day. Now, as far as prayer time, I will say that prayer time every day, I'm gonna make sure that I do that because. I just seem like I can't function without praying, if that makes sense. So for me, I have to pray every day um, and pray um, multiple times a day, you know, a couple times a day. I'm going to say multiple, a couple times a day. But then some days I might pray that morning when I get up and I might not pray again until I get ready to go to sleep at night. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes that happens. Um, as far as reading my word, I consider reading and studying different, like, I more so like to study. I will read, but I more so like to study because I feel like when I'm studying God's word, it gives me um, it gives me an understanding of what I am studying and what and that way when I read it, I you know I'm understanding exactly what I'm reading because I've kind of just um, studied it and, and um, read my commentary and 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 read like or flip back through you know let the um, the scriptures in the middle that I tell you to go back to this scripture and it's kind of saying the same reference and letting the scriptures reference the scriptures and things like that. Um, and so those are things that I do when I study. Now, at one point in time, I was making it an effort to study every single day. But some days I might not study every day. You know, it might I might fall off a couple of days, but then I'll pick back up. Um, as, same thing with reading. I'll read. You know what I'm saying? But then it might be a day where I don't read at all. Now, if I don't read at all and I realize it, then I'll go back and I'll um, probably do a devotional or maybe I'll uh, study one scripture. I'll read what my devotional scripture says and that'll be the scripture that I meditate on. But I might not necessarily read my Bible that day. Um, again, because it's just life happens, right? And so now because I have been told and I've heard, not told personally, but told or heard in sermons and a lot of preaching that you should read every day. You should pray every day. You should study every day. You should attend all church events, basically. They, they don't say it in that many words, but it's like, you better not miss church, right? Um, and so because I've been told and taught that, 
it's like I'm in a place I've gotten in a place now where um I'm like oh my gosh if it's like I'm panicking like oh my gosh am I you know what are they gonna think of me because I did you know I missed this event or I didn't attend this event now they're gonna say this and now they're gonna say that and sometimes I've even gotten to the point where I push through not to go to worship God but I push through because I'm like well, I think that if I don't go, you know, people may think this of me if I don't show up. And so then, because I think people would think this of me because I don't show up, the truth be told is that I'm not going in with a pure, sincere heart because now I'm trying to please man. I'm not worried about me pleasing God. But that's how it feels when, you know, because it's like we feel it's like sometimes people will make it seem like you can't um, like you can't make a mistake or you can't fall short or did you have to follow this strict protocol to be a Christian? Now, let me clear this up. Yes, we are called to be set apart. We are called to be different from the world. We are called to be held at a higher standard as a Christian. That is not what I'm talking about. I am talking about us going on our everyday life and let's say, for instance, like I just used the example that I may have not picked up my Bible today. And now I got to, I'm, I'm, you know, and I know people may not know, but then when you go and you hear people speak and they're saying like, you should be doing this and you should be doing that. Then it, it just gives you the feeling of, well, I didn't do this last week. One, or I missed one day last week. Like, is the Lord going to be mad at me? Or I don't know. It's just like. It's a it's a fearful feeling of like God's wrath. Like he gonna get you. He gonna he's not gonna be gracious and merciful or loving and kind. We have okay now before I even say that, yes, we should have a fear and a reference and a respect for our God. Yes, by all means, yes, we should. Um, and I believe that wholeheartedly. But I think we've gotten to a place in, in our culture where we have and now it's kind of changing a little bit now, because at one point in time, it was like, if you don't do this and you don't do that, then you um, go to hell. Everything you do, any little mistake you make, anything you do, you mess up, you go to hell. I mean, nowadays, it's not so much like that. It seems like people are able to do whatever they want and get away whatever they want in the church. And that's bad, too. But that's a whole nother video because I'm not talking about that part right there where people are not showing God's respect. They do not have a hell. They don't have a fear of God. They feel like they can do whatever they want. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those who strive to be Christ like every day, but you have, you, but they, they have a fear of what people think if they mess up or make a mistake or, or they have a struggle period in their life. Um, let's just say with mental health, let's say they're going through a mental health crisis and let's just say they haven't picked up their word all week. They just did not have the energy to pray. They are stranded mentally. They might be feeling depressed. They don't know how to push through. And so it can be times where, because, you know, their faith is really struggling and it's like, and some speakers will make it seem like, it, you know, they won't say it exactly, but it's like, you know, they'll say, I hope I'm making sense. They'll say like, if you're not doing this and this and this and this, then you're not doing the things of God. You're not taking, you're not taking care of God's business. You are not, um, handling God's business and you're not working for the kingdom and you're not, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's like, what? Like, did you check on this person? Did you see if they were like, it's not that they're intentionally doing it. They're really in a struggle point right now. So I say all that to say that people pleasing by me worrying about what people think about me. If I show up, if I don't show up, if I do this, if I don't do this, have been one of the things that I was not aware of is, is as considered people pleasing. And now that I am aware of that's what it is, it, it, um, that right there made me really, I, you know, feel like, man, I'm trying to please, who am I trying to please? It's like, I'm more in, I'm trying to please man instead of pleasing God. And I want to please God. I want to be obedient to God. Right. But I find myself being more concerned about what man is going to think instead of what God thinks. 
because I'm so worried about what people are going to say or think of me. If I show up, if I don't show up, if I do this, if I don't do this, I'm, I'm, I'm getting out of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, that's what's been weighing me down. And I didn't even realize it. So now I'm in a place where I am going to make intentional decisions about whatever decision I make, as long as I'm striving to please God, as long as I'm striving to walk Christ light, as long as I'm not bringing shame to God's name, as long as I'm doing the things of God, my walk might not look like your walk. I can no longer worry about what somebody thinks about me. If they think I'm not doing the things of God because of I'm not doing things according to how they think I should walk and what I should be looking like, that's their problem. That's no longer my problem. I am letting go of this today. I'm not doing that anymore because it weighs me down. And I just, it hurt my heart to realize that that was considered people pleasing. I'm like, what? Me worrying about what people thinking is people pleasing? Yeah, it is a form of people because what it is is that I'm worried about how people perceive me or what they think of me. So that means that if I don't want anybody to think that I'm not doing the things of God, that I'm not spiritual, that I'm not on my walk like I'm supposed to, that means I am worrying about what man thinks of me, period. And when it was broke down to me like that, I was like, no more, no more. I am Carla. I am who I am. Nobody is going to determine and tell me that I'm not good enough on my walk because I'm not doing things according to how they think I should do it or how I should look. All the things of God that I am supposed to be doing, I'm going to strive to continue to strive to be like every day. Doesn't mean I'm lazy because I miss church. Doesn't mean that I, because I didn't go to this event, I'm not supportive. No one has no clue what goes on behind closed doors. In my mindset, what's going on with me, whether or not I'm, if I miss church, I may be at another church. If I miss church, I may be doing it just, or if I don't go to this event over here, and that's not to say that I miss church all the time because I go to church majority of the time, but it is sometimes where I miss, um, because I'm not feeling well, I'm not feeling well, or I'm like literally exhausted. I have been going so much week. Like I will watch church online sometimes. Now I do not believe that that's a form of, um, that should take over or replace going to church. That's not what I'm saying because I'm a firm believer in getting up and going to church. Yes, the Bible says to forsake not the assembly of believers. So we are told to gather together. I believe that that, that scripture is more geared towards people who call themselves Christians or are Christians and they feel like I don't have to go to church at all. I could just look at church online. That is an instruction. So like, I believe that that is told to us for us to make sure that we do. We're supposed to be going to a church and being active in our local church. I believe that. Because I miss a Sunday because I don't feel good. Don't beat me over the head about it. No, I mean, and so now I'm worrying about if I don't go, what are they, what people going to think or whatever. And I'm just, I'm over that right now. If I participate in something or if I don't participate in something, um, I want God to lead me in the whole, like, I don't, <clears throat> I want to be in a place now where I say, let me get back with you. I'm not no longer just saying yes, right off the rip. Let me get back with you. Let me think about it. And if they feel like they can't wait and they got to choose somebody else, so be it. Unless God tells me to say yes, right then and there then I'll say yes. If God is leading me to say yes right then and there or no right then and there, then that's going to be done. But if he's not leading me to say yes right then and there at that moment or no right then and there at that moment, let me get back with you. Let me talk it over with my husband. Let me pray about it. Let me pray about it. Um, and so I'm just, I don't want to be And like now let's go down to comparison. What I told y'all earlier about me, um, thinking about because I don't pray, like I am so fearful of praying out loud in front of others. I don't like to, um, because again, now I'm focused on, it's hard for me to really focus on because I know so many people that pray and they really can pray because we, some people, um, I'm not saying all, but you know, and I know it's not. I'm trying to see how to explain this. I'm not saying that somebody told me that you can't pray, but sometimes we make people feel like that their prayers are not being heard or not going to reach God, maybe because they don't pray for an hour 
you know. And that was a struggle for me. You know, like, am I not praying? Is God going to not hear my prayers because I didn't pray for an hour or I didn't pray for a long time or I didn't get up early in the morning to pray? Like, is is God going to not hear my prayers? I'm just going to tell you the truth. Corporate prayer and group prayer and friends prayer and family prayer, I believe wholeheartedly in that. Like, it's nothing wrong with praying with your family as you should play with your family, pray with your family. There's nothing wrong with praying in groups of people. There's nothing wrong with corporate prayer in church. We must have corporate prayer does the church. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing wrong with praying with groups of people from the body of Christ. I'm not against it at all. I do believe in it wholeheartedly. I think it's beneficial and I think it, it is, you know, I know that God, you know, he said because his word said when two or three are gathered in my name, right? So I believe there's a lot of people that's praying together that, you know, God is really going to hear our prayers and some things are going to happen and, you know, but I will say this for me, I seem to pray better by myself. When I'm in, it's just me and the Lord in my secret place. I pray better in my secret place than I do in group settings. And I'll pray in group settings. I have no idea, no harm. I'm talking about pray with them. I ain't talking about pray, be the one to pray. But I will pray with, um, you know, my friends and my family and stuff like that. Have no issues with it. But I find that when I am intimate with God and it's just me and him and I go in my secret place, I'm prayer on a whole nother level and I can tell the difference like because it's just me and God it's no distractions around it's no my thoughts are wondering it's no like that's just how it is for me and I'm sorry if you know you know somebody might be watching like you should be focusing on God and not on people Sometimes it's easier said than done. So I can focus on God, but then sometimes my mind may drift off. And that could be the enemy when I'm in a group pair, prayer. But I'm still growing. I'm not perfect. Again, I am a, not a perfect Christian. And, um, and so I do have a tendency to compare my prayer life with others. And I don't want to do that anymore. I think that my prayers are... You know, I think my prayer, even though I don't pray like this one or that one, like my daughter can pray. My daughter can, man, my oldest daughter, man. Um, But, you know, I believe that God, like, I think he just used prayer differently in certain people. And so that's just how she prays. And the same thing with other people. But then you have people that just pray normally. I don't want to say normally, but they pray just like regular communication, if that makes sense. Like when I talk to God, I'm like, Lord, it's just regular communication, just like I'm talking to you guys right now. It's not necessarily like, Lord, I'm going to hear this and I'm going to, I want you to, you know, bless my family. And Lord, like, it's not like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know. Lord, thank you so much for the things that you did. Or, you know, thank you for this and that or, um, you know, whatever else. Like, um, and sometimes I just talk to him and I think that's still a form of prayer too. You know, I'm like, oh my gosh, God, did you see that? Or God, I know you know this or that. You know what I'm saying? God, you, you said this right here. Oh Lord, thank you, Lord. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hope I'm making sense, but, um, I have to get out of that, that fear of praying in front of other people because I don't pray like other certain people. I have to get out of that. Um, and so that's something that I'm, I'm, I'm asking God to help me to get through. So we have to get to a place where we're not comparing ourselves. And when I, when I, and I find myself when I'm praying, when I'm comparing myself in that form, sometimes it can come off as like, maybe I'm not as spiritual as them. Maybe I'm, is it something that I'm missing? Is it something that I'm not doing that that's making me not pray like that? Or like, am I not just not as spiritual as they are? Or like all these different thoughts creep up into my head. And, you know, I, I, then I don't know. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to be like this anymore. Um, and so God is working with me with that. And um, and that's just me being vulnerable. 
about, you know, me comparing myself if I'm more spiritual than somebody else because I feel like I'm not. Most of the time I feel like I'm not. Um and and it makes me feel inadequate, you know. Um and then lastly, perfectionism. You know, messing up, falling short. I'm not not necessarily talking about sin. Sin can be incorporated, but I'm not talking about habitual sin or living in sin or, you know, I'm not, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when you make a mistake or you fall short or you fail a test, um, you know, cause God will test us. Um, but if you just make a mistake or, or like I said, going back to reading our word every day and studying every day and praying every day. And like, if you fall short now, you know, you don't want people to know that I didn't pick up my Bible yesterday or, I didn't pray yesterday or I didn't do so. It's like we hide those and we try to make it seem like we're perfect and we do these things every day. Now, do I believe you should do them every day? Yes, I do. But I also know the reality of life is sometimes it may not happen. And so when it, when it doesn't happen, I don't think that we should beat ourselves up. And I do that. I beat myself up. Or if I'm not beating myself up, I, how, I dare not let anyone know that Carla Ford didn't pick up her Bible today. Because most of the time I do, but the one time I don't, I dare not let anybody know that I didn't study today. Because then I'm going to feel, there go my camera again. Alright you guys, my camera overheated again i don't know what's going on this is the first time that my camera then started doing this because it i never had any problems with my camera overheating until recently so i don't know maybe because it's kind of warm in my office but um i think the last thing that i was talking about was perfectionism and just make it making it seem like we're perfect christians that we don't make mistakes that we don't fall short and um i am also guilty of that and um, just making it seem like, you know, I got it all together. You know, I make sure that I read every day. I pray every day. I study every day. I do all this, that, and the third one. And which most of the times I do, but I do have days where I don't. And so, but it's like, we're not going to tell anybody that, right? We're going to keep that hid. And so when you keep that hid and you don't, uh, and you, and you have conversations with people and you seem to make it appear as though you do every single thing right all the time, that's you representing yourself as a perfect Christian. <clears throat> you don't talk about your flaws. You don't talk about your bone of view, uh, your, your mistakes. I meant to say now. When I say all of these things about us being a perfect Christian and us making mistakes and falling short, I'm not saying that we should gloat in our mistakes or we should be proud of our mistakes. That's not what I'm saying. I want to clarify that. What I'm saying is that in order to allow people to help us along the way and encourage us when we have weak moments, we have to let it be known. We have to realize that we are flawed. And the thing of it is, is that who are we trying to um, make it seem like we're perfect to? We're trying to make it seem like we're perfect to other Christians, to man, right? Because God knows that we're flawed. He knows that we're going to make mistakes. He knew us before he formed us in our mother's womb. So every and anything that we do from the beginning, middle, and to end, to the end, he knows. So we can't fool him. You know what I'm saying? It's impossible. We just can't because he already knows. But who can we fool? We can fool man because they don't know everything that goes on with us. So we can be in a place where we appear as though we are perfect. We are flawless. We don't make mistakes. We get it right all the time. Let me say this. I don't want this video to be too long because again, I don't want my camera to overheat and turn this off. I don't want my camera to overheat <laughs> and stuff or whatever. If I turn it on, I just move it up. I don't want my camera to overheat. But anyway, um, I went to a women's event uh, last month. I was on a panel of women that just basically um, discussed some things. We were talking about our before we came into Christ and then when once we came into Christ, like basically before we got saved and after we got saved. And during this particular event, we talked about our struggles before we got saved and we talked about our struggles after we got saved and us doing that and putting these things in the atmosphere allowed the women that were there to see like oh my gosh i'm not the only one oh my gosh i've struggled with this too i've struggled with that or i can relate 
And then afterwards, we begin to encourage them in the Lord. Like we had a couple of minister pastors there that begin to encourage them in the Lord. And so that's what I mean by us being in a place where we can't, we can't, I don't want to be in a um, place where I no longer try to seem like I'm perfect because I'm not. And if I make mistakes, I don't want to get beat over the head. Like I said, because as long as I'm not doing anything to bring shame to Christ's name, I sh nobody should be beating me over the head. Do I need encouragement on my weak times and weak moments? Yes, I do. I don't need nobody to beat me over my head. I need for people to have love and grace and encouragement for me during the times that I may fall short, right? And so ultimately, our goal is not to please man. Our goal should be to be to please God. And a lot of the times we we think that we're pleasing God. But if you think about it and you really just do a reality check in some areas of our life, we're not just trying to please God. We're also trying to please man. And that is the truth. In, all, in, in areas of our Christian walk, if you reflect over your life, are you trying to impress somebody? You know what I'm saying? With just always being a part of different things, always um, doing things, always like making it seem like you, you know, you pray every single day. You don't never skip a day. You never miss a day in church. You never, um, you know, not read your word. You never like all these things you, you put out there to people that you never do. And let's be real with ourselves, right? Come on, let's be real. And I'm not saying that there's nobody that's out there that doesn't do it. But we it, it, even if those are not the areas that we struggle in, it's other areas that we may struggle in. So I want us to get to a place where we're, we're not people pleasing, where we stop comparing ourselves to other Christians and that we get to a place where we don't come off and try to be perfect because really our perfectionism, our perfection, is that a word? Perfectionism, our perf being a perfectionist, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Being a perfectionist is another form of people pleasing because what are you trying to do in that area? You are trying to appear and come off as though you are this perfect Christian. So that is what I wanted to talk about today. I hope that somebody can relate. Again, I don't want anybody to get confused as to where I'm thinking that when we mess up and fall short and, and go through things that we should gloat in it and be proud of it or anything like that. I'm just saying that we should begin to be more vulnerable to let people see our struggling side a little bit more. I don't mean you got to go into details about your business, but if we open up and be more vulnerable in these conversations that we have with people and be like, yeah, I do that. But honey, let me tell you the other day I struggle like this. Then now somebody's like, you know what? Oh my gosh, I had one of those days too. And I just prayed and I'm like, Lord, help me. Like, I'm really struggling this week. Like, man, we got to encourage one another. We got to, you know what I'm saying? Then we can be there for one another instead of making it seem like, because when you come off as like you this perfect Christian, then I promise you, you can make other people feel like they ain't enough. They're inadequate. They're, they're, we'll feel like we'll never measure up. It's like we'll never. And then when you use God's word and throw his word in there and, and try to make people beat people over the head. It's like now we're trying to like, oh my gosh, is God going to be angry with me? Is God going to be angry with me because I'm, you know, and again, I'm not talking about living a sinful life. I'm just saying because we made a mistake or we fell short. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we project God as like, he's just going to be angry. We don't hardly, some people don't never project God as a loving God, as a merciful God, as a graceful God. Some people project God is like, you mess up, you're going to hell. You do this, you're going to hell. You do that, you're going, you ain't doing this and you ain't doing that. And you should be doing this and you should be doing that. Instead of allowing us to have a sincere heart and wanting to please God from a sincere and pure heart. Now we're trying to do things because we're trying to measure up and check off these boxes and do the work. To You know what I'm saying? Like, I hope I'm making sense. And so I'm just, I am in a place now. I can't speak for anybody else. I don't know if anybody can relate that as of today, I, I'm the Lord is going to help me to stop people pleasing, stop worrying about what others think. I am to strive to please God and God only, not man. That's that's who I'm trying to please God and God only and not man. Don't get it twisted now. I'm not saying that we shouldn't serve others or anything like I don't want people to think about all those things and start incorporating all these things that I'm not talking about. 
I am talking about people pleasing, doing things, trying to look good and appear to be good to other people, trying to make sure you fit in, trying to make sure you check off all the boxes, trying to make sure you look important, trying to make sure you look like you just this kingdom woman or kingdom man and I do everything. You know what I'm saying? I never miss a day. I never do this. I never do that. I'm always on point and you should be too. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I'm talking about. And now you got these. And then think about it. When we come off like that, what about the newer people that's coming into it? That's just getting saved. We really making them feel inadequate. Like they can't measure up because they like, wow. And then some of them, it's hard for them to get and stay on track. Because now they like, I got to do all that. Because all we doing is presenting all the rules of this and this and this and this. Again, I'm not talking about sin. Okay. I'm just talking about falling short here and there. And falling short can mean a sin, but when I say I'm not talking about sin, I'm talking about living a sinful life intentionally. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about that. That's not incorporated into this conversation because we know that you cannot do that and be on this walk like that, right? I'm talking about you are striving to be Christ-like as much as you possibly. You, your best is not going to look like anybody else's best. Your best may not look like your own best from day to day. One day you might give God your best is like, like you done spent the day or spent an hour or whatever reading, studying, praying, doing all the things, spending that time with God. And then the next day it might be something where you're not feeling well. And the best you got is just to say, oh my God, thank you, Lord. I thank you once a day. Like that might be your best for the day. So your best, yes, we are to give God our best. We are to give God our best, but our best might not look the same every day. Everybody's, it might not look the same every day, but it also is not going to look like somebody else's best. We are on different levels in our walk. You're going to have people more seasoned than you. You're going to have people probably not as seasoned than you. Stop comparing our walks to other people's walks and where we think we should be at on our walk. And that's what we do. So I'm in a place now where not no more. I am striving to please God and God alone. And I am in a point now where I don't want to worry about or care. And I'm just going to say that with truth and honesty. And I stand firm on it. What anybody thinks of me, how they think of me and how they perceive me. So if they want to think that because I didn't do this over here that, oh, she ain't spiritual or I thought she was this or that, then that's just what they think. Because ultimately, anything that I do sincerely from a pure heart is going to show for itself. I don't have to announce anything about my Christian walk. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to explain myself. Everything should show naturally. My fruit should show naturally. Nothing that's forced. It's going to show naturally. And so therefore, it, that's what it is. And um, it may be a struggle for me, but I'm going to try my best. No longer. And I'm going to be like, well, if I don't do or what are they going to? Nope, I'm not doing it. I'm going to consult my heavenly father and whatever my heavenly father tells me to do or not to do. That's what I'm going by. I ain't going by what somebody else say or think, period. And that's where I'm at. And again, it might not happen overnight, but it's going to put me in a place where I am no longer people pleasing, which is going to help me also not to compare myself and which is also going to help me to um, be vulnerable and share things with people even when I mess up and not try to appear and come off like I'm this perfect Christian because I'm not. And that's just it. So I thank you all for listening and watching. I pray, 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 pray that you all Go and seek God for yourself. Study his word. Meditate on it. I pray that you have a prayer life of intimacy with God, you know, and um, and that you're not doing any of these things to check the box because people are telling you do this. I think you should do this. I think you should do that. I don't think you should do this. I don't think you should do that. Consult your heavenly father. That means seek God in all things, in all areas of your life. Seek God. It's OK to seek wise counsel. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying when you just got people just coming up to you and telling you what they think of you, what they think you should or shouldn't be doing or whatever the case may be, seek God. Seek God. He'll give you their answers. He'll direct your path. He'll let it be known to you. You know, let your fruits 
be shown naturally. Don't do things just to check off the box. Don't do things just to fit in. No longer am I. Mm -mm. No longer am I. And it is what it is. And I don't mean to sound harsh or mean or arrogant or anything like that. Y'all, I'm just tired. I'm tired of being in a place where, you know, I feel like I'm not good enough or I'm inadequate because I'm not measuring up to other people or doing what other people think I should or shouldn't do. I'm tired on this Christian walk because honestly, that's where a lot of my anxiety came in. I've always had it, but it really heightened a lot when I got on this spiritual walk because sometimes we can put high expectations on people and fail to realize that we are all human. And um, when we put these high expectations on people, you know, you will feel like you would never measure up. You'll always be running a race of trying to measure up to what you think man should think, you know, how they should see you or think of you. And I'm not doing that anymore. And that way I can and grow on this walk, continue to grow on this walk in peace with the grace of God on my journey. And whether I have difficult moments, hard moments, then, you know, I'm praying that people that I know that's close to me that I can look to to help me along the way and encourage me, I will do so. But outside of that, anything else, my no going to be my no, my yes going to be my yes, it, my let me think about it going to be my let me think about it. And that's just it. And, and whatever you, the person think or feel, because if I'm not answering according to how they think I should answer, that's their business. It's not mine. And, and, and I'm going to get in the habit of no longer explaining myself. Now, I'm talking about explaining myself when I do or don't do things. I'm not talking about in a relationship, in a conversation, because when you're in a relationship with somebody and things happen or whatever, yes, by all means, I believe that you should explain yourself to get an understanding where each other coming from. I'm talking about just explaining yourself because you did this or you didn't do that or you were supposed to do this or whatever like or you can't do that so now oh no I can't do it because and you got to explain no I'm mm -mm, no longer explaining myself I have a bad habit of trying to explain myself to make it seem like you know I don't want people to think so let me tell them the reason behind no I and I'm going to say this this one time. I have some issues going on with myself. I have some health issues. And I, if you look back at my other video, I have to take care of me. And I have to keep my stress levels down. I have to keep my stress levels down. And that's what I plan on doing. And anybody can think anything that they want to think about me for whatever I do or don't do. They can think it. It's no longer my concern. In order for me to be beneficial to the kingdom, I have to see about myself and take care of myself so I can be as beneficial to the kingdom as I need to be and as, as God needs to use me. I can't run myself rugged, you know what I'm saying, because of what people think I should. I can't. I can't run myself rugged and I'm not going to. So I'm going to do what I feel like is in my capability, again, according to what God leads me to do and wants me to do and tells me to do that's it um because people won't take you into consideration they won't take you your help because i look fine because i walk around i don't say i'm not feeling good all the time they'll take that for granted sometimes and think oh she all right she walking around she or people do what they want to do and people go what they want to do that might be true and if that's the case with me, then that's just the case with me. You're not going to tell me my relationship with God is not to your liking because um, or I'm not doing the things of God because I didn't do something you wanted me to do. No, you're not going to determine and tell me your relationship ain't this because you should have did that. You should be doing this. No, that's not you. It's not your place to tell me that. It's not. It's not. Mm-mm. Not your place to tell me and determine what my relationship is with God. I know what my relationship is, God. I know the areas where I struggle and fall weak in, right? And so that's just, it is what it is. And again, I don't mean to sound harsh, mean, rude, or I'm just tired. I really am. I try my best to be as pleasant as possible, as nice as possible. But sometimes when you get tired, you get tired. And so I want to encourage you all to reflect over your Christian walk in life. Reflect over your Christian walk in your life. Be honest with yourself. 
See if you are in a place where you're people pleasing or being a perfectionist or comparing yourself to others, your walk to others. And if you are, I advise you to seek God for help and redirect your thoughts and your mindset and to begin to strive wholeheartedly to be Christ-like and to please God and God only. So with that being said, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all. I love you all. Share this video. Share this video. Share this video. I'm not holding back. I love you all much. And until the next video, you guys be blessed.